Hello, 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 and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. In this video, we're going to talk about the stock market. In front of you is a daily chart of the S&P 500, but this chart actually shows what happened to S&P 500 between November 2017 and November 2018. In a few minutes, I will move on to what's happening to S&P 500 at the moment and the forecast. Before we continue, let me remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't and click that bell notification. Thanks a lot. But before that, I want to discuss this interesting metric that you might use as a hint on when to enter and exit the stock market. And that metric is put-to-call ratio from the CBOE, Options Exchange. This is a put-to-call ratio for that same period between November 2017 to November 2018. And basically this chart shows whether people are mostly buying the stock market or selling the stock market using the options. Buying puts, of course, means you buy the right to sell at a given price. That option will be profitable if prices actually drop. And buying a call option, of course, means that you buy the right to buy at a specific price. That option is going to be profitable if prices actually increase. So what I want to do with this chart is go through some peaks and troughs and compare that to the stock market. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So from um, late October all the way into the end of 2017, looks like this put-to-call ratio is declining. Let's first start with this peak in early to mid-November 2017. A peak of put-to-call ratio means a lot of people are actually selling. There are more puts rather than calls on the stock market. A lot of people are selling the markets. And what happened in early to mid-November is, of course, there was a tiny decline in the S&P 500 which scared the market speculators. At that time, before the significant rise, it was actually a much better time to buy the stock market rather than sell it. After that, we see stock markets going much higher. Actually, within the early part of this rise, the inexperienced investors were right. We see that there is a trough over here at the end of November, meaning that a lot of people were buying the stock market. And of course, sometimes inexperienced traders do get it right as well. Moving on to the next peak over here at the very end of December 2017. Again, those speculators are scared by a negligible decline in S&P 500 and everyone is selling. Everybody is selling right before the next substantial rise in S&P 500. And of course, again, this rise makes everyone excited. Again, we see these troughs. In mid to late January, everybody is buying the S&P 500 mid to late January, exactly when it was time to actually sell before a significant drop into early February 2018. When I was looking at it a couple of minutes ago, I actually found it somewhat amusing. I think it'll be interesting for you guys as well. After that, we move into the peak in early to mid February when everybody is selling the stock market. That's exactly when they actually should have been buying the S&P 500. That's how the markets work. That's why the cycles that I always talk about, they actually work. Over here, everybody is selling. Next extreme after this peak is this early March low. It's actually not very extreme. We might even skip it. But a low here on this chart means a lot of people are buying in early March. And that again, that's just when they should have been selling already before the next decline into the daily cycle low. And the peak, of course, is at the very end of March, when everybody is selling. <laughs> at the very end of March, you should already have been buying near the lows for that daily cycle low. And I know hindsight is 2020, but you guys can uh, have a look through some of my older videos and see that we actually did quite well with the uh, triple Qs, QQQ. Anyway, moving on through this chart, the next kind of extreme, the next trough is over here in early to mid-June. And of course, in early to mid-June, S&P 500 has already increased, improving the sentiments on the market. Everybody wants to buy just before the daily cycle low. The next peak is, of course, at the very end of June. At the very end of June, at this daily cycle low, when everybody should have been buying, they were selling. <laughs> From that peak, we move on to the trough in late July, 
And okay, in late July over here, inexperienced speculators were right to buy. The rise did continue, but they were right simply because this daily cycle was still early and there was a lot of time for that daily cycle to continue moving up. So these speculators do get it right sometimes. From that trough to next peak, early to mid-August, in early to mid-August, of course, the speculators were selling because they were scared by this negligible decline in S&P 500. Once prices increased further, everybody is, of course, buying. Over here, at the very end of August, everybody is buying. Over here, at the very end of August, when the S&P 500 was actually close to its local top, before the significant drop into the next intermediate cycle low. After that next peak over here, early September, some people did get it right by selling in early September. They were right because they were somewhat scared by this drop in S&P 500 that lasted for a few days. And based on cycle duration, it was also time to sell. There was a chance that this decline would have actually turned into the intermediate cycle low. As it happens, there was another slight push up in S&P 500 before the intermediate cycle low actually took place. And of course, what do we see with the speculators over here at the very beginning of October? Although this is not an extreme value, but still, more people were buying rather than selling S&P 500. Just at the very beginning of October, that's right exactly before the, inter before the intermediate cycle dropped a lot into the cycle low. Over here at the late of October, everybody is selling. They were scared by this decline into the intermediate cycle low and uh, they were actually correct to sell in the intermediate time frame. Although in the short time frame, they were wrong to sell in late October. In the intermediate time frame, let's give it to the speculators. They were correct because as we know, these intermediate cycle lows sometimes or often come in three waves. We have one more daily cycle, which advances for just a few days before creating a lower low. Lower low is often what I talk about in intermediate cycle lows. You can check that in some of the previous videos. So we'll move on to the next chart. This is November 2018 to until today. And uh, let's start with this trough at the very late November. Very late November, of course, everybody's buying. Everybody's buying because they didn't listen to my videos and they were not thinking about a lower low. They were buying just before the intermediate cycle dropped a lot into the intermediate cycle low at the very end of December. And what do we see at the end of December, mid to end December? Of course, everybody is selling. Everybody is selling over here <laughs> when it's time to buy. From that peak, this trough also at the end of December does tell us that some people were buying at the correct time. But a deeper trough over here at the end of January tells us that even more speculators did enter the market. Of course, once the sentiment has improved a lot, by the end of January, S&P 500 has already gained a lot of points and people were not as afraid to buy here at the end of January as opposed to end of December. But as you guys know, the best time to make your investments is when blood is flowing on the streets. I don't remember who said that first. Anyway, this continues to decline until um, mid-April when everybody is buying again. And what do we see in mid-April? That's exactly the time before that intermediate cycle rolled over and dropped into the intermediate cycle low. Next peak over here, late May. Late May over here, the intermediate cycle low is exactly when people should have been buying. That peak goes into, let's say, this trough Late July, people are buying again. That's the trough over here. Late July, that happens to come just before the drop into the daily cycle low. People are scared by this daily cycle low. Over here in mid-August, everybody's selling again. And that's mid-August over here, when you could pick up some uh, PQQs for a lower price before the continuation of the intermediate cycle, which started here in the middle of current year and was ready to continue at least in the middle of August. Then we see people buying again in early September. Early September, people are buying just before the daily cycle low again. Early October, everybody's selling right when they should have been buying before the next daily cycle advance. And finally, we come to early November. Everyone's buying. 
And that's actually close to where S&P 500 is at the moment. Everybody was buying here in early November. And that actually tells me that possibly S&P 500 is ready to roll over into this daily cycle low, which actually might turn out to be the intermediate cycle low as well because the ongoing intermediate cycle started in uh, the very beginning of June. They usually last for about half a year, so we're actually right at the normal duration for an intermediate cycle low to happen over the next several weeks, maybe over the next couple of months. So that would give us this first daily cycle lasting for a couple of months, a second daily cycle also lasting for a couple of months, and possibly we are ready to enter the declining phase of the daily cycle, which might turn out to be the start of an intermediate cycle decline. 